my little bitty buddy. <laughs> we always, you know, uh, heard from the owners. There were four owners, Barry, David, Jimmy, and Roger. They would let us know when an artist was coming, uh, maybe a day or two ahead. We knew Paul was coming down, and Phil Ramon came with him as a producer. A few hours earlier, it had started a huge rainstorm outside. Now, this is an old building. When it would rain, we would have water leaks. Well, in this particular case, the water was dripping right down into the console. And for fear of it shorting out before the Simon session started, I had to figure out some way to stop it. So I told Steve Melton to go down to the Big Star and get me a couple of boxes of Kotex. And I took Kotex and, and, Scott, and thumbtacked it across the cracks where the water was dripping. And at that time, Paul and Phil walked into the control room for the first time. So that was their introduction to Muscle Show Sound. And Paul and I became dear friends. We really did. We said some things to each other that we would never want anybody else to know. Personal things, you know. Uh, we were that close. And uh, Phil Ramon and I, I love Phil Ramon. And he and Paul came back again a few months later with Artie, Art Garfunkel. And uh, Paul and Artie did the only record that they ever did together after they split up. And it was called My Little Town. When Phil came in before the session started, he said, I want to cut this song at 30 IPS which meant twice as fast as the speed I usually used on the tape machine. I said, Phil, there's really no need to do that. It's just a waste of tape. I said, these machines are set up. They're, it's quiet. There's no tape noise. I said, I'm cutting plus five. He said, I want to cut 30. So we start cutting on this track, and at going at 30 IPS, I could only get three songs on a roll. At 15, I can get seven or eight songs on a roll. So we had been cutting it and been cutting it, and they were real close to getting the track. Barry said, okay, let's do it one more time because this is going to be it. We've got it now. And he was getting ready to count it off. And I looked over, and I was at the end of the roll. If I had taken time to hit rewind and go all the way back to the top, or had I taken off that tape and put a new roll of tape, it would have spoiled the groove that they were in. They were in the groove, and I knew that because I'd been working with them for so long. I knew them. And so I just reached over and flipped it on 15 because I had enough tape to cut it at 15. So I cut it at 15, and that was the track. And Phil went ballistic on me. He started cussing. He went outside. He was yelling, and I said, Phil, if this song sells over a million, I will never let you forget it. A few years later, I'm working at Criteria Studios in Miami, and I was working with Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and Phil was in another studio working with Chicago. I had earlier reminded him of My Little Town. It sold a million eight. So he figured he's going to get me back, so he sticks his head in the door of the control room while I'm working and says, Hey, Master, just remember, up is louder. I said, you're wrong again, Ramon. And I reminded him that Tommy Dowd had in his house in Miami Beach, which I came down and mixed an album with him on, that had reverse faders that MCI made for him, where when it was all the way up, it was off, and you would pull it down to make it louder. Because there's a standard, you know, in in engineering that up is louder. Well, I proved him wrong again. It was funny. It was just a lot of fun.